as Rezzy is disappointed that there is no meat on this cutting board. All right, gang, today we are going to start a tincture um, for my lovely wife who's on the camera right now to help with her, uh, how would you describe it? Lyme's disease, I guess, is the, the right answer, but it's right. an autoimmune. Mm -hmm. So like it helps with my inflammation, but it helps with my memory. That's the big thing is my memory. So I make a five mushroom tincture for her. And today I'm getting to add for the first time uh, some lion's mane, which can be naturally foraged in our area. Um, it is the coolest mushroom. It is just absolutely amazing. What we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna start, I've got two pounds of it here. Oh, look at that bad boy. I'm actually gonna chop these up real fine and put them in a jar. Then I'm gonna cover them in Everclear or 190 proof um, spirit grain alcohol. So. We're just gonna chop them up and we're gonna chop them up as fine as we can. We're also gonna have Red Belt Polypore, Chaga, Artist Conch, which is a relative of Rishi, um, Turkey Tail, and Agaricon that Paul Stamets talks about all the time will also be in this tincture. All of that is actually foraged from our surrounding uh, forest here on the farm, uh, except for the chaga, which does not occur naturally on Vancouver Island. So that I actually got from someone who forged it in the interior of British Columbia. So just to shorten this up a little bit, we're gonna chop it up fine. It's gonna go in a gallon jar. We're gonna cover that up. We're gonna let it soak for two weeks and uh, shake it every day. And we're gonna come back after the two weeks is up and we're gonna do the next step of this double decoction tincture. So stay tuned for the follow up. All right guys, so continuing on, we've got, I'm just eyeballing it, half a gallon jar, third of a gallon jar of fresh lion's mane uh, cut up into this. We're gonna put the Everclear on top of that, but we're going to make this part of our tincture, our mushroom tincture process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, some of our dehydrated wild mushrooms here. This is a Garicon. I was able to harvest this um, within walking distance of our home. So what I'm gonna do is actually go equal parts by weight of a Garicon, Red Belt Polypore, Tricky Tail, Artist Conch, West Coast Rishi, and Chaga. And I'm gonna grind those up in our coffee grinder and put them into the jar and then soak it in every 30 grams. 30 grams of red belt polypore, one of the most common mushrooms you'll find in our forest on the west coast. We're very fortunate. Turkey tail. Turkey tail actually probably has some of the most promising uh, research done. Next thing is artist conch. This is a relative of Rishi. Another super common wild mushroom here. Have to get some more. Good thing I know where there's some is. Oh boy, just what I was looking for. Just ran out of these beauties. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Artist conch. Ganoderma, Ganoderma apollinicum. One of the West Coast Rishis. Very good for your health. Sorry for the jiggly video. I've got a dog attached to my arm here, but this is artist conch. Rezzy. <laughs> this is why it's called that. Because you can make art with them. Okay, guys, just to show you how we process a really tough artist conch for uh, preparing for tinctures and dehydrating you need a serrated knife of some kind this is just a simple inexpensive uh, bread knife it works great for this a regular knife will probably really struggle stand it on its edge and when you do that you can actually saw this really thin so that it can be dehydrated 
really easily. It's 30 grams exactly. Beautiful. 30 grams. Now, chaga looks different though. Chaga looks like a burl on the side of wood and usually grows on birch. Um, again, not, not native to Vancouver Island. So I got it from another wild crafter. There we go, 30 grams. And grind it in the coffee grinder. And then add it to our jar here. We'll just go ahead and grind one and then we'll bring you back to the end of it. All right, so we did not, my wife called it. She's like, you don't have enough Everclear. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. I don't have enough Everclear. <laughs> so um, this is what it is right now. <laughs> That's the seven mushroom blend started shaking it up. It's almost enough, but um, this has got to sit for two weeks. So waiting till tomorrow to get one more bottle of Everclear in here uh, will be just fine. So we'll dump that in. But think about a year's worth of potential immune support and medicine. Stay tuned. We'll bring you back for the uh, the double decoction process after this is sat for two weeks. All right, folks. Uh, welcome to the next step stage of creating our uh, autoimmune system supporting anti-inflammatory mushroom uh, wild mushroom tincture. So this is the um, liquid that uh, the mushrooms were soaking in. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna measure exactly what we have in milliliters of this mixture, and then uh, pour that into this jar. And then I'm gonna go off camera and do some math, because then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the, think the mushroom mash, and I'm going to uh, slow simmer that. Um, for a couple hours actually. And my goal is, is when I combine the alcohol in the pot here and the uh, tea that we're gonna make, the, the, the extraction that we're gonna make, that the net alcohol by volume will be at least 40%, which will keep it shelf stable. We're gonna go ahead and pour this into this jar, into this measuring cup. That's 1500 mils. And let's see what we got here. And 150, so 1650 milliliters. This is the mushroom mash that I just squeezed as much of the alcohol as I could have out of it. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is start it cooking. Um, I did my math and basically I had 1,650 mils of uh, grain liquor with at 60% alcohol by volume. So the way I did my math was, it basically means that I can add 330 mils to this, to that same liquor, and keep it at 40% alcohol by volume, which is going to keep it shelf stable. So I'm gonna start with a lot more than 330 mils, and we're gonna basically let this simmer for a few hours, uh, and then I'll strain it out, and then I'll cook it down until I get 330 mils, or a little less than that, and then we'll mix it all up, and it'll be good to go. And that's a double extraction tincture. So be right back. Okay, gang, we're back. It's a matter of straining um, and filtering the liquid, which is just an exercise in patience, lots and lots of patience. I use single layer of butter muslin uh, to strain the alcohol decoction and the water-based decoction as well. Um, and had to cook the water decoction down to get to the 330 mils that, we're, that we needed. So what we have after it's sat overnight normal, a little bit of emulsification um, in the liquid from the, I'm not sure if that's gonna show up very well on camera, from the liquor and the water trying to mix. So basically it's pretty normal with our homemade one. As we say in most of our videos, we are not experts in this, but we are brave enough to learn and try. And that's what we really encourage you to do is read, learn, watch videos and try things yourself, which we did. So when Vanessa uses this, it's normal in the jars that it's got a little emulsification. Oh, 
that was close. Did you guys see that? The lid almost opened in my hand while I was shaking this. Ho, ho, that would have been an exciting video. Um, <clears throat> give it a shake and it's good to go. That's it. Just make sure that all the solids are suspended. It's not really any solid, but the emulsification. So all we're gonna do now is uh, dispense this or decant this down. I'm not tighten the jar too much. Decant this down into quart uh, and pint jars to use as we go along. So that's it. One thing we have discovered, this is probably almost a year old. Um, it takes a long time for Vanessa to use that. This is probably, this is easy a year's worth of, of supplement for. But the mushrooms, especially the red belt polypore, really leave black residue, dark black residue on stuff. So it gets sticky, it gets hard to clean. So what we did from that lesson is we're using the ball leak proof plastic uh, lids for this. So these won't be nearly as effective as the metallic rings, I don't think. We'll find out. We'll just pour this last one in. And there we have it. We have probably a year's worth of immune boosting, anti-inflammatory, medicinal property, mushroom tincture. Now, Vanessa takes this once a day, twice a day? Uh, depending on how usually once a day. Once a day, normally. And uh, she's brave. It is pretty bitter stuff. It's got some kick to it, but she just takes it in a dropper under her tongue, one dropper per time, if I remember correctly. And it is bitter. This is not medicine that tastes good. You will know you are taking medicine when you, when you have this but it is good for you. Made it ourselves off of pretty much stuff that we foraged here on the property, so that's special for us. Thanks for watching, gang. Like, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. If you got questions or comments, drop them down below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.